that that wasn't coincidence. You didn't just fall into that. That God done it. I always make sure and give him credit. There was a place in the Old Testament where the people started getting blessed. And he said, man, when the blessings come and things start working out for you, don't forget that it's God. It's God's blessing on our lives. Solomon was one of the richest and wisest kings in the Bible, y'all. But in the end, the Bible says that his heart turned to other gods. I couldn't believe that. It just blowed me away. How a man could be that blessed and that prosperous, you were to see what God done for him. And I got to reading things that Solomon wrote. And he said he got him men singers and he got him women singers and he planted him gardens and orchards and he had orchestras and he, everything that he wanted to do, he'd done in life. And he said it was vanity. He said it was all vanity. Everything he done was about stuff, y'all. You can't find contentment in stuff. It's okay to have stuff, but you won't find contentment in it. It'll just rust and it'll tear up. And you'll always, you got to find contentment in here with God. This is where contentment starts. And then the other stuff, you can enjoy it. But if you just leave God out, and all through Solomon's history, if you go back and read all the stuff in Ecclesiastes, everything's vanity, and he was miserable, and he didn't want to live. He didn't see the purpose in life. And I thought, man, he had everything, but he had nothing. And then his daddy was just a sheep herder up in the mountains, but he would lay on his face and write love songs to God. He searched after God. He went after God. He found true contentment, y'all. You don't hear David talking a whole lot about stuff like that. He was happy. Blessed is the Lord. Today, this is the day the Lord's made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. David had some peace in his heart. So all your stuff is not going to bring peace in here. Somebody say amen that knows what I'm talking about. It'll never finish this. Everything in here. I've said many times years ago when I was playing in the bands and we were signing autographs after we would play in a big place. We played in Johnson City, Tennessee with Hank Williams Jr. years ago. And we went down to the tables and we had pictures and CDs and all that stuff. And we were signing people's autographs. We sit down at the table and these people would come up and have us sign pictures. And, and it was a lot of fun. Self-like stuff like that. And all that was enjoyable, and I really enjoyed traveling. We, we traveled, I sang in Colorado on top of a mountain in a cabin for a wedding, and we played up in Indiana, and we traveled all over Nashville. We, we stayed down there for weeks at a time and played on the university campuses and did all that stuff. Went in the recording studios where Marshall Tucker recorded and met all these great people. Man, yeah, it was really something. But at night when I laid down, y'all, I was empty. I couldn't figure it out. I should have been happy. And I was as long as my mind was occupied. But when I got quiet, I had time to think. And I thought, man, I am a lousy daddy. Whew. There's my daughter up there. She needs her daddy. And I'm down here pursuing my career. And there's my family. They need help. But you know, I'm down here in Nashville. I had a bunch of parking tickets. <laughs> and the car that I had was in my dad's name at that time. And I was in Nashville in a motel, partying, throwing down. And I got a phone call. I just remembered this. And my dad said, son, they talking about putting me in jail. I said, what for? He said, they said you got a, a hundred and some parking tickets that you didn't pay. Well, I lived in Matoka over top of the auto parts store. And every time that cop would put a ticket on my car, I'd just put it in a little shoebox. I did this, y'all, because he didn't like me and I didn't like him. It was personal. And the guy that owned the store said that I had a parking place because I was renting over top of the place there where he, you know, where he had, and he said I could park there. So I thought the cop was just confused, and <laughs> so I was going to use that. And I got a hundred some parking tickets and put them in a shoebox with a bow and took them to him at Christmas. Really did, y'all. I did this. I put them in a little box and I said, "Happy, Merry Christmas." Well, they turned it in. <laughs> My dad. I was in Nashville. My dad said, what are you doing? That car's in my name, so all the tickets come back on him. I said, Dad, I don't have to pay them. Yes, you do. I said, well, I was renting a place on the street, and the guy told me I could park there. He said, well, you can't. The guy lied to you. So my dad paid those fines. It was ridiculous. And uh, I hung up the phones, kept on partying. No consequences. 
My dad covered me. He always covered me. I needed some consequences, y'all. I needed something to make me grow up. Oh, God. And we started seeing all this stuff and going all these places. I didn't care about nothing. And one day it just all fell apart. All of it just fell apart. The band split up. And everybody went separate ways. Everybody wound up divorced and messed up. And uh, then I was just sitting there. And all these friends that I had and all these people that, hey, there's Eddie Day. There's Eddie. After I was out of the band and I wasn't up on stage and I didn't have any drugs and I didn't have any money, I wasn't going nowhere to take them with me. They didn't want to talk to me. I was nobody. So you understand, you find out things in life that everybody is not really a true friend. The ones that stay with you through the hard times, those are real friends. The people that don't really want nothing from you, they just love you. You better hang on to those. When you meet real friends and when you meet real people, you better hang on to them. They're few and far between. Somebody say amen. Give Jesus a hand.